A lot of AI use cases revolve around being able to use LLMs in a data structure like a table. That's where you get things like clay, you get things like relevance, and all these people jumping on the N8N bandwagon just to enrich some of their data that they already have. What if I told you, you don't need to pay for those subscriptions and you could do that yourself in Google Sheets for free using the techniques I'm gonna show you and the template I'm gonna make available to you at the end of the video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Borna and I run an AI agency called Velocity Alpha based in Toronto. Canada. Without further ado, let's dive into a demo of how this thing works. All right, so we're going to have two ways of doing it. The first one is probably going to be available to a lot more people. So I'm going to start with that one. And that is using Gemini's new AI function in Google Sheets. Now, this might not be available to you because you have to first get into the Workspace Labs program. And I'll leave a link below. You can see that I'm already in. You need to use your personal account. So this doesn't work for like Google Workspace for Teams and such. Uh, and it's very simple. You just confirm that you're over 18 and uh, just put a few checkboxes and you're in. So once you're in, you can then use this AI function and you can see the format is your instruction and then an optional range. So for an instruction, it, it's just anything you would pass to an LLM. You could say hello and it would respond back with hello. But in this case, since we're working with data, we're probably gonna wanna add some data to it. So what we're gonna do in this fictitious example is take a first name, job title, and industry, and we're going to generate an icebreaker for either a LinkedIn message or like a cold email message. Now, I'm not gonna get into how to write a good first message for, for cold email or uh, or LinkedIn. This is just to show you the process. Here, I've, I've just told it you're an outbound SDR generating an icebreaker for the person with the following name, job title, and industry. Your icebreaker should be short, sweet, friendly, and conversational, and not cliche. Provide a single sentence for the icebreaker and nothing else. And then I'm passing it the range with that data. So you can see if I press enter, it doesn't immediately run it. You have to kind of do all your work and then when you're ready, you kind of commit and send it to the server to fill those. So I wanna do the same for these rows. And now with all these selected, I'm just going to generate an insert and it uses the Gemini model to make these sentences. Hey John, I, I came across your work as a CEO in the manufacturing industry and was hoping to connect. Or for the head of IT, Jackie, um, curious about the innovative tech solutions you're implementing in the fi financial services sector, Jackie. You can see, yeah, I'm, I mean, these are super cliche <laughs> this five, because we haven't provided any like uh, unique context. This is a very high level information, but you can imagine that you could use this for a lot of things, right? So it's not just uh, generating messages. You could use this to clean up names. You know, sometimes you have first and last names and you, you're not sure. Maybe it's a culturally unique context that you don't know about and you don't know where the first name ends and the last name begins. Or maybe you're using this in uh, the context of candidates applying to your company and you want to kind of be able to group them into buckets like this person's junior, this person's mid, this person's senior. It could be used for any kind of classification, generation, summarization task. Now, this is all well and good, but what if you didn't have all your data here. Maybe some of your data was actually on the website. So this is what you would typically use something like clay for using their clagent where you say, here's the website, go and find out who are their top customers or go and find out if they have any events coming up. So when you need an agent to go and look at the website, and extract some information from it, this isn't gonna work. This is only relying on the, the data that you feed it directly here. So unless you go and you turn the website into a bunch of text and then put that in a cell here and then refer to that with Gemini, you're not going to get what you were looking for. So that's why I created a different version of this using an extension that you could just use as an add-on to your Google Sheets. And while Gemini is free, for this one, you are going to need an API key. So you are essentially running it at cost 
but as we know you know the the cost for these prompts is continuously going down to nothing and if you like you could host your own llm as well and just expose that api so the api key could be your own private llm as well so with that let's move on to our second demo which is the custom add-on which i lovingly call shady mcsmartface because i guess i'm a reddit user now you can see that it's a very similar setup where instead of just passing ai i'm doing v VA underscore AI. And if you're wondering what VA is, that's just Velocity Alpha, my company. So one thing that's super common, for example, using these AI systems with your data for outbound purposes is cleaning company names because it's a dead giveaway for you to say, hi, I wonder how things are going at Databricks Inc. You know, they don't call themselves that, so you shouldn't call them that in your message either. So the way uh, this prompt is um formatted is a normalize each company name uh, to the short colloquial version that they are likely to use to refer to themselves. For example, Salesforce Inc's become Salesforce, Toronto District School Board becomes TDSB, Bessemer Venture Partners becomes Bessemer. So we're just giving it a few shot examples so it knows exactly what to do. Only return the normalized name and nothing else. So if I run this, so we can see that it correctly normalizes this to say Databricks. And if I run this for another couple like Basecamp and Zapier and etc., we can see that that should work nicely as well. And that was fairly fast. So under the hood, it's using GPT-40 Mini, but the model is configurable and uh, you know you just pass it as a, as a next argument optionally. So that's well and good. And that does pretty much exactly what you saw in the Gemini demo, but with your own custom model, which you have a lot more control over. Also, I'm able to use this in my whole company so anyone opening google sheets can now have access to this formula but that's not the only formula i've also created another custom formula which is va underscore agent which acts kind of like clay's clagent and is able to actually browse and scrape information from a website so here we can see i'm interested uh which of these companies are offering AI solutions. I don't want to reach out to people who are not offering AI solutions. So in this one, I'm saying here is the URL, right? So that's the databricks.com. Answer yes or no only based on the content of the website are AI features of the product being marketed. If I run this, uh, and Databricks, if you don't know, is a is a huge data company and they do have AI stuff. But Basecamp, if we go on the website real quick, we can see, you know, yes, project management. OK, yeah, no AI as far as I can see. So it should say no. So let me drag this down for Basecamp and all the others. And it should say no. Yes, yes, yes. Now, that's pretty cool. But it goes beyond that. It doesn't just look at the text of the website. You can actually get it to parse the images as well. So for example, if I go to databricks.com and I scroll down to their customers, we can see there's all this list of logos here. So imagine you're an investor and you want to know this startup or this list of startups that I have, what are the big names they have as customers and that's kind of like your signal that this is a, a good startup to invest in what you would do you could come to this sheet again and this time you can set a parameter which is include images where it goes to the website and i'm telling it to return a list of the customers or named logos mentioned on the website as a text only markdown list so we're just returning a list from this uh, this optional parameter is what model to use i'm just going to use the default which is gpt40 mini and i'm going to say true for the images and if i go and click say okay we can see JetBlue, Burberry, Heineken, NBA and if I go down here Burberry, NBA and I'm sure you know JetBlue is right there so you can see it even parses the images and if I run this for all the other ones shablam after a few seconds we will see the rest of the results now you can modify your prompt to say don't return the the markdown triple quote thing but you get the idea now, just to make sure it's clear that this is not just for outbound, I'm gonna show you one more use case really quickly, and that's for customer reviews. So I have a bunch of reviews from my shampoo product, and I wanna find all the things that people like and dislike about this product. 
So first of all, I can go in here and I can say, what is the overall sentiment of the review, positive, neutral, or negative? And I've selected just the review and I go down. I don't need this one. And we can see, okay, negative, negative, positive. Let's see, is this negative? Yeah, nice packaging, but too expensive, not buying again. What about this one? Uh, good for oily hair, left mine too dry. Might work better for someone else. So we can see that that worked. And now I wanna extract the likes and dislikes. So similarly, you can see extract the, the things customers liked about this product as a con concise markdown list, only return the list and nothing else. If nothing is found, return not applicable. So we can see here's all the things people liked. Here's all the things people disliked. And in just a few seconds, we have a pretty good overview of how uh, the product, what people like about it, what people don't like about it. Now, you may have noticed that while it's loading, it shows like an error. That's just Google Sheets way of saying a custom function is still kind of working. Um, but this isn't the only way you to use it. You don't have to pass a single cell. Here, I show you another way to do it, which is grabbing a bunch of the reviews and saying, give me an overall view of the most frequently mentioned things that people liked, including the number of mentions. And I'm selecting this whole range for for that and we can see that you know softness of hair pleasantness of smell how many mentions there were and overall you know where your product's doing well now llms aren't really good at counting things so don't do it like this for large data sets uh, for that there's like a lot of better ways to do it including clustering and summarization and things like that but for most of your day-to-day -day needs this is a killer feature to have in your organization now for all you curious cats out there i also want to mention how this actually works under the hood so it's basically just uh, google app scripts which allows you to write some javascript like code uh, in the back end of the google services for example sheets docs slides etc and uh, that's what people use to generate these add-ons as well as these custom functions. So if I go to app scripts here, you can actually see the code and that's what I will share with you at the end of the video. Uh, you can see for the AI custom function, I'm just using an open AI completions API call and I'm just passing it the prompt and re retrieving the answer. That's essentially all it's doing. It's only a single HTTP call it is returning the results from the API. Now it is using this special fetch function, which is how you do it in this context, but everything else is just basic uh, JavaScript. And also I did uh, have a little bit of extra code to create a cache so that if you're using the exact same prompt with the exact same inputs, then uh, you know for six hours it will return whatever you had calculated six hours ago. So you're not constantly hitting the API. Although OpenAI does uh, also do some caching, so you would get it at a, a discounted rate uh, anyway. And also I want to mention that you don't have to use OpenAI. You could easily swap this out for Open Router and basically have access to all the LLMs. And it's trivial to add a selector to use a different model or just pass it in as a model type and handle it here. So that's for the AI one. But the one that's super cool and is sort of my secret weapon uh, is what I use to get the web content. So you can see for the web content, I'm actually using Gina.ai's reader API. And notice that I'm not even passing an API keys because they give you a very, very generous amount of free calls. So as long as you're not slamming their API, you're pretty much able to use this for free. And it's very simple. You can see all you got to do is take whatever URL you want and just prepend this r.gina.ai to it. So if I go r.gina.ai and then I say clay.com, so you can see it went to the website and it returned a complete markdown version of that website, including all the images. It is extremely readable and you could try to roll this yourself. I have, but it's actually not super simple and they have very specialized, custom trained a language model for doing this task. So if you go to Gina.ai, let's just go to the reader API. You're able to see you also get 
all these other options, for example, to only return a JSON response or use their custom language model uh, or wait for a particular selector to appear if it's a JavaScript loaded page before returning the scrape results and a ton of configuration options around to even caption the images that don't have proper captions or caching or streaming. Like there are a ton of features here and you do not need to implement this from scratch, please. And the super nice thing is that it's pretty much free for 10 million tokens. Now that is a lot, but it does include all the tokens that are returned from scraping a website. And you can see that the pricing is super cheap. Once you go beyond that, if you pay just $50, you get basically five cents per million tokens. So it's super affordable and very useful for your projects. An alternative to Gina is also Firecrawl. You might want to check them out. And it is, it is possible to integrate that into the tool as well. So that is actually a function I did not show you uh, via web text, which given a URL in the, in the formula will just return the markdown. So you could, if you wanted not to use this agent thing, uh, and you just wanted the website content, you could just use the VA web text function and pass it the URL and it'll return the web text um, and optionally limited by the number of characters. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and this saves you some money and gives you more control over your AI tooling. Now, if you want Sheedy McSmartface for your own organization and you would like step-by-step -step instructions as well as all the code for all the different custom functions, the caching, the website scraping, just leave a comment below saying Sheedy. I will then provide you with a link that only you can claim once you verify that you were the one who made that comment by logging in with your YouTube account. Finally, if you would like a version of this with more bells and whistles that's unique for your organization, I do offer paid consulting services. For example, you might want to use a custom large language model that's private to your organization or just install it across the entire user base. I'd be happy to help if it makes sense. The link to book a free strategy session Session with me will be below. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And if you want to train the YouTube algorithm, leave a like so it shows it to more people. That's all for now. See you next time.